Okay, we have our corner moldings done. We have our dormer done. The uh, the only outside piece that we have left to do, besides the windows and the shingles, uh, is going to be our base. Okay, now to make the base, what we're going to do is we're going to build basically a picture frame with a piece of wood in the center that goes up into the middle of the birdhouse. Okay, so we're going to take a piece of OSB, which stands for Oriented Strand Board. Most people call it wafer board. Okay, we're just going to take a piece of that and we're going to cut it so that it fits snugly right into the center of the house. Okay, now my piece is just a little bit too big, which is fine. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that piece of OSB that I have and I'm going to stick one corner of it into the house. And then I'm just going to draw a line on both of these sides. You're going to draw the line on the house itself and that will tell you about how much too big your piece is. Okay, now I'm going to mark this corner as number one and I'm going to mark this corner as number one. So now I know which corners go together. And I'm putting the rough side down. It won't really matter. You could put the smooth side down if you really wanted to. Okay? Now, once you have that done, you know that you're going to cut off this other side here. And I can see that my distance right here is just under a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to set with my pencil and my finger to where I draw a line just a little bit past that one. And then I'm going to come to this side of this board right here and I'm just going to draw a line using my finger as a guide along the bottom of the board and draw a line that's just a little bit further in than the line that I drew on the birdhouse itself. Okay, that way it'll give me a little bit of space. Okay, then I'm going to come over to this side and I'm going to do exactly the same thing. And this one is just barely over a sixteenth of an inch. So I'm just going to come over onto this side, right in here, and I'm going to mark this a little over a sixteenth of an inch, and I'm going to draw that line all the way down. Okay. Now what I'm going to do on a side like this, so I can take it to the disc sander and just sand that down to the line. This side I'm going to want to cut off either on the power miter saw or on the band saw, whichever you're most comfortable with, and then sand down to the line. And when I'm done, I should have this be able to fit right in there. Okay, we've trimmed off the two sides that were a little bit too big. I did both of them on the power miner saw. And uh, when I bring this back over, lining up my one and my one, it fits right in. Now, you don't want to let it go. You just want to make sure that you know that it fits in there. Okay, now that we've got that done correctly, we've got that set to the exact size of the birdhouse. Okay, what I've now got to do is I've got to cut and make a picture frame, basically, that will go underneath this board. We're going to use a piece that looks like this. Okay? It's about uh, two and a half to two and five eighths inches wide. And we're going to end up cutting four pieces and we're going to put them on here like a picture frame, only on the bottom side. When we've mounted them to that, then when we set that base in there, the frame will stick out past the bottom of the house. Okay? So the first thing I've got to do is I've got to figure out how far, and I'm doing the uh, rough side down, I'm going to figure out about how far I want these little picture frame boards to overlap so that I can glue a nail. I'm going to go with about three quarters of an inch. You can measure it or you can guess at it as long as you've got plenty of wood in here for these pieces that you're going to cut to glue and nail into. I'm going to do the same size all the way around. Okay, all the way around, draw that line. Now, basically all I have to do, I've got these lines drawn around here, all I've got to do is measure from the corner where the lines intersect to the other corner where the lines intersect. Okay, so I'm going to get out my ruler, I'm going to lay that on there right in the corner and measure to where the other corner is, and mine is about six and three eighths. Okay, so I'm going to cut four pieces at 45 degree angles six and three-eighths inches long. Okay, so I'm going to, so what we're going to do is we're going to move over to the power miter saw 
and show you what we're going to do from there. Okay, we're over at the power miter saw. Now what we've got to do is we've got to cut 45 degree angles on the end of these boards and have angles that go opposite each other on all four boards. Okay, this little area right out here at the end of the power miter, okay, and if you're using the other power miter that doesn't have the slide on, it's a little closer in, has a little lever. In this case, we're, we're going to bend down. Okay, what we want to do, you pull up on the little lever and then you rotate this until the gauge locks into the 45 degree angle mark. Once you're on the 45 degree angle mark, you're in good shape. Okay, we're going to push this good edge. So I have a rough edge and I have a clean edge, and I'm going to make sure that I cut pieces so that I have the rough edge on the outside of my frame so it looks more rustic. Okay, so all four pieces are going to be cut with the good edge against the frame or against the fence. Okay, make sure that you've cleared so that when you cut, you don't leave a flat spot on the end. And all I'm going to do now is cut this off, and then I'm going to measure. So I put the safety glasses on, and we cut. Okay. Now I have a 45 degree angle cut right here. Now I'm going to slide this 45 degree angle out here and I'm going to measure. I need the inside corners, that is the small part to the small part, to be 6 and 3 eighths of an inch. So I'm going to put mine, I like to use the 1 mark so that I get a little more accurate. So I'm going to put my 1 mark right on that corner. I'm going to mark it at 7 and 3 eighths because when I subtract the 1, I know that I'm at 6 and 3 eighths. So it's 6 and 3 eighths, and I can test that by putting the end right there, and I'm at 6 and 3 eighths. Okay, now I've got to change my 45 degree angle to the opposite side and put my saw blade down. I'm going to bring the blade down, and I'm going to get as close an estimate as I can so that I nick that little mark that I made down there without cutting it off. It'll be too short. Okay. Now it's very important that I kept this hand clean out of the way with the blade turned this direction so I don't accidentally cut my thumb off. Okay. I now have my piece cut, 6 and 3 eighths, and now I've got to go back and cut another 45 degree angle going this way. If I have two trimmed edges on my thing, I can flip the board back and forth and use the, corner, the edge that I cut the last time. But in this case, I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to again cut my 45. Line it up, don't waste any material. Okay. Now I'm going to take and set this piece that I cut a little while back and use the fence as a guide. And I'm going to line these ends up until they're perfect. And then I'm just going to trace on the outside. Now, because I traced, I know that my mark is actually a little bit too big because the pencil's on the outside of the wood. So this time when I cut, I'm just barely going to make sure that I cut the, uh, the line off. Make sure my hand's out of the way and that the wood is against the fence. Okay, now I have two pieces that are exactly the same right here. And when we put them together, we get that picture frame 45 degree angle. Now we're going to cut two more pieces just like it to finish that out. And uh, then we'll put it together and our base will be done. Okay, now we've got our four pieces that are cut, they're all exactly the same size. What you want to make sure that you do is space them all exactly the same way so that if you have a rough side or a not so rough side that you, uh, that you get the same sides facing up on all four pieces. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to move the uh, OSB out of the way and we're going to lay these out just as you would a picture frame. Okay, making sure that we've got the same sides facing up on each piece. Okay, now if you've done things correctly, they should line up together nice with, nicely without any gaps in the corners. If you have serious gaps, you either cut the wrong angle or you cut one or two of your pieces too short. We don't want to have that happen. Okay, now 
if you find that you've got something lying underneath or your pieces aren't exactly the same thickness, there's not much you'll be able to do about that. Uh, you could clean the table, I suppose. Uh, but this looks like it lines up pretty good. Now our goal then is to take this piece and we're going to glue and nail that right on top of it, nice and evenly, so that we have the uh, same amount of overlap all the way around. And the easiest way to do that is to line up the corners with the lines of the joints. Okay, so that'll be pretty even right there. And we know that we've got just about three quarters of an inch of overlap. Okay, once we know that everything fits the way we want it to, what we're going to do is we're just going to put some glue in the joints, and then we're going to put some glue on here, and we're going to nail, or in this case, staple, the OSB down right to the frame, and that'll help hold it together. So what we're going to do right now is we're just going to take our glue bottle, and we're just going to put some glue right inside this joint here. Okay, and we'll push those things together so it doesn't run all over the table. And we'll take the second piece, and we'll put glue on there. And we'll slide that into place. Okay, now again, they should close up nice and even. You want to make sure that you get them that way before you do any other nailing. Okay, once those are pretty tight together, then we just take some glue, and we can put that glue right here on the inside, where we know the board is going to cover. Okay, and once that's done, we're going to take our OSB, and we're going to lay that right on there. Okay, and I'm going to check and see, I'm going to transfer over which corner is my number one corner. Almost forgot about that. So I'm just going to mark that this is my number one corner. Okay, and I'm going to lay that right on there. And I'm going to line up as best I can my corners with the lines that the joints make. And when I've got all four corners pretty much lined up, that down into place. Now, this time I'm going to use a staple gun. This one works exactly the same as the nail gun, but you'll notice that the staples have two legs instead of just the one, and they go in the middle instead of on the side. Okay, once I know that I've got it in place, I'm just going to push down. It's really important that you don't use staples that are too long, so you don't shoot all the way through. Now I push down there. flip it over, and uh, a little bit of gappage, but we're going to fix that here in just a second. Okay, good, clean that. Okay, and now we're going to switch back over to our nail gun, and we want to make sure that we have the long nails in it this time, two. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to shoot a nail into each one of these corners right here sideways. Okay, so I'm going to push this over here, and I'm just going to hold that. And the goal here is to squeeze those together, making sure that we shoot close enough that the nails will actually reach, and make sure they're lined up nice and even on the surface, and then just shoot one nail into each corner. Okay, so squeeze them down together, close the gaps up, and shoot them all right in there. And that will just hold those corners until the glue dries. So there's no chance of them 
pulling apart. Just want to make sure you get them all lined up before you pull the trigger on the gun. Okay, now your base is complete. And I have my number one mark right there, so I know that this corner is going to go right there. And over. And there we go. It fits right down on there. So now I get a nice tight space right in there, and you can see it sticks out evenly all the way around. And it can be pulled off. Now, what we'll do when we finish the project is if we're not going to use it as a real birdhouse, we'll just shoot a nail right in here and one in the opposite side right into that OSB, and that'll lock that base on there so the birdhouse won't lift off.